Greetings all and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to take a look at two of Nbenik's heavy hitter handouts. The RG Cube, which just recently launched, and the 556, which has been around for quite some time. And before you say it, I realize this is a bit of a strange comparison as the main difference between these two handouts are their form factor. So they are not really designed for the same use cases. They do however have very similar internals and are quite close in price, so I would argue that there are at least a few people that are struggling with this choice at the moment. Before we move on though, please note that this video is based off of research and an analysis of some of the top reviews out there mixed with my opinion, so it is not a hands-on experience. I do believe that you can still find some value from it, as I endeavor to properly research my facts before I make these. You can also check the description for the links to my source material if you want a more in-depth look. With that said, let's quickly discuss the specs of these two devices. And I say quickly because they are very similar. They have the same CPU, RAM and storage, so their performance will be identical. The obvious differences are the screens and to some degree the battery. The Cube has a 5200mAh battery and the 556 has a 5500mAh battery. The bigger size battery and the type of display in the 556 has produced reports of up to 10 hours of playtime when playing older systems and up to 5 hours of PS2 and GameCube. In regards to the Cube on the other hand, I've seen reports of up to 7 hours, probably on older systems, and I would guess between 3 to 4 hours on more demanding systems. Screen wise, the Cube has a boxy 1.1 aspect ratio 720x720 720 IPS LCD, where the 556 has a 16x9 1080p AMOLED display. The AMOLED screen on the 556 truly does make games look brilliant making those old retro gems that you like to play look truly amazing. But the 16x9 aspect ratio unfortunately does not lend itself well to older systems that were designed for CRT TVs back in the day. So the likes of PSP, GameCube and PS2 games will fill out the screen nicely and look brilliant on the 556, but older systems like Game Boy, NES, SNES, Genesis, N64 and Dreamcast will typically have black bars on the sides that basically ends up being wasted screen real estate. These systems end up sizing better on the square screen of the cube, and although they do not always fill up the whole screen in every game's case, most will. The 1x1 aspect ratio on the cube is perfectly suited for the likes of vertical games that you used to have to play on massive dedicated arcade machines. It is also perfect for Nintendo DS, as it can fit both DS screens on one screen, and due to the fact that it is a touchscreen, it can receive inputs. When you want to play DS games on the 556, you typically have to swap between the two screens, which can be a bit inconvenient. So the screen type and sizes will be a major factor when choosing between these two. So make sure to consider each of the before mentioned aspects thoroughly before choosing. On to the main event of ergonomics and design then, as this is where there are obvious more pronounced differences to consider. The Cube and the 556 offer distinct philosophies, each catering to different preferences and use cases. The Cube stands out with its unique square form factor, reminiscent of classic handheld gaming devices. Its compact size and ergonomic grips make it comfortable for extended gaming sessions. As mentioned, the device features a distinctive 1x1 aspect ratio screen, which is particularly well suited for retro games, vertical shooters, and with the right settings, Nintendo DS games. The Cube's button layout is optimized for its square shape, with a Sega style D-pad that some say is better than that of the RG Arc, another handheld favorite. Face buttons apparently offer good tactile feedback, and at least one reviewer mentioned that the triggers feel better than those of the 556. I have to say that a few reviewers have mentioned that they prefer the matte-like feel of the plastic on the cube to the glossy finish of the 556. So if you dislike plastic that gathers fingerprint smudges, you may prefer the cube. The cube is obviously more compact than the 556, and this will also be something to take into account when choosing between these two. Reviewers seem to agree that although the Cube is still too bulky for a standard pocket, it should fit in a large cargo pants pocket or in the front pocket of a hoodie jacket. The 556 on the other hand will probably not be able to do this in any comfortable way. In contrast, the RG556 adopts a more traditional widescreen format, appealing to users who prefer a larger display for modern PC gaming experiences. In my opinion, it is also better suited to streaming from your Xbox, PlayStation, PC, or from cloud gaming services. The 5.4 inch screen offers ample real estate, making it easier to read text and appreciate graphical details. Just a side note, the analog sticks are not perfect for this out of the box, but I'll cover that a bit more in a minute. I also think native Android games like Genshin Impact just look better on the 556 as well. The bigger screen and widescreen format really complements them. That may just be my preference though, 
When it comes to ergonomics, the 5i6 is tailored for comfort during extended play sessions, with well-placed grips and buttons that are easily accessible. One thing to note is that the analog sticks on both the 5i6 and the Cube, while functional, have been noted to have a limited range of motion and produce cardinal directional snapping, which may impact gameplay in certain titles. While this won't affect retro gaming too much, it was noted that it is quite frustrating when streaming games. A software fix for this has been released by the community developer the Gamma Squeeze. It can be applied over the latest update to improve the functionality on the sticks. I will leave a link in the description if you're interested. Performance wise, there is not much to say, as there is basically no difference in performance between these two devices. Both the Cube and the 556 are powered by the Unisoc TA20 processor, which offers robust performance for emulation and Android gaming. Users report smooth gameplay for most retro systems up to the PlayStation 2 and GameCube era. Although not the entire library, you will probably be able to play about 80 to 90% of these with some tweaking. So, choosing between the RG Cube and the RG556 ultimately comes down to personal preference and intended use. The Cube offers a unique, compact design that excels at retro gaming and vertical shooters while the 556 provides a more traditional handheld experience with its larger widescreen AMOLED display that is more eye-catching and lends itself better to Android gaming and game streaming. Consider your gaming habits, preferred genres, and portability needs when making your decision. Both devices offer impressive capabilities with a roughly $15 to $20 price difference in most cases and represent the best of what Amonic has to offer. If you want more detail on these devices, you can check out my overview videos on them by clicking on the link on screen now. That's it for this one though. Have a nice day and I will catch you in the next tech update.